Oh my god. Jesus, that's great. Hey guys, Nate here. Just thought I'd share a little bit of a shower thought project that I've had on the go. Um, for the past couple weeks, I've been trying to design a 3.5 inch frame that is entirely made on a 3D printer with uh, PTG. Uh, the goal for this was to make it a bit of a cruiser. Um, normally most of my builds are pretty stealthy. Uh, no flashy lights, nothing like that. So with this build, I kind of wanted to go complete opposite. Uh, in order to keep it sub 250, I went with an 03 unit. Um, so I can still get decent footage, but uh, there's no way I'm risking an action camera on a 3D printed frame. That being said, I did take it out for a few test flights and it did surprisingly well. Uh, we did black box log it and there was some insane resonance, but I didn't notice it in the actual flight itself. It was, it was a really weird graph to look at. Um, that being said, it does fly. It's somewhat efficient. It's not the most efficient thing I've ever built, that's for sure. But uh, it works, it's flyable, and it looks pretty cool too because I put some cob LEDs on it. So I'll just quickly go over the frame. Uh, you'll have to excuse, I didn't put the top plate on for this video because I blew up my flight controller or it blew itself up. Uh, that's what you get when you are loyal to a specific brand that seems to fail you on a regular. Anyway, so here's the frame. Um, nothing too insane, but a few things to note, some design features. I did build a TPU block sort of thing, two parts of TPU on either side to mount the O3 camera um, for a soft mount. Considering that this thing has probably way more vibrations than any regular carbon fiber drone, I thought that would be important. Uh, I'll share the footage with you in a minute here and you can decide for yourself. I thought it was pretty clean footage actually for, for what it is. You can see I got an O3 in the back. This thing is soft mounted. What that means is I don't actually have any screws going through it at all. Uh, it just sits in there like a press fit. Um, something that you can get away with when you're 3D printing. And then on the back, we just have a bolt-on uh, TPU antenna mount and a bolt-on GPS mount. You can see the cob LEDs go around. I'll show a clip of me turning that on for the first time. I've never used them before, um, and holy crap, do they not disappoint. So I also did a few things to try and mitigate vibrations. When you have this cap on, um, the top plate, it will actually press against, press fit against the arms. Um, so on the top side, um, oh, I should also add that these arms, the triangular shape is printed as one with the frame. You actually push the wires through when, you, uh, when you're setting up the motors for this. Um, but yeah, this top plate kind of secures them in place. It adds just another point of contact so you have uh, less opportunity for it to flex. Um, the other thing I've done is on the bottom here, I've added these extrusions. They, they stick out a little bit, um, but that actually really reinforces the frame. There's not a whole lot of flex. Like I can put quite a good deal of force in this. Um, thankfully that's helped by the TPU that, that I got going on here. You see the bottom two screws are kind of loose here. Uh, this is where the top plate bolts on to avoid the possibility of this thing falling off. I've actually made it so it screws onto the bottom on the back and then screws into the sides on the front where it mounts to the camera, kind of just holding everything in place. I don't know if I can show it clearly, but uh, right here, that's kind of where the front of it mounts on. Ignore the zip tie. I didn't realize the adhesive on cob LEDs was horrible. So I had to hold it on somehow. But yeah, that's the general idea. The frame's nothing too fancy, nothing too complicated. It's a, um, well, it's a two-part print, not including the O3 holder and the mounts on the back. So pretty simple. 
Uh, oh, I should add that the this is a bottom battery mount. Uh, I'm running a 650 4S LiPo on this. And all I did was print this TPU sheath that goes underneath it. You run your strap through the bottom of it and you're on your way. It worked pretty good for the flights I did test with it. It was maybe a little bit loose. So I could probably print that out of PETG as well and it would be a bit better. Um, but yeah, I'll show you some footage. I won't spend too long talking about this. If you're interested in trying one of these builds for yourself, just keep in mind that it's not really better than a carbon fiber frame I, in any way at all, actually. It looks cooler and it's free if you have a 3D printer. I can't think of too many other, you know, plus sides. It's it's a cool, it was a, a thought experiment, an engineering experiment, I guess you could say. So yeah, I'll put the files online. There's a few things that you'll want to note if you go to print this yourself. One, if you're printing 14 or you're using 1404 Zing motors, the um, bottom mounts are actually too big. Like the holes that I put on here, I gave them a range like 10 to 15 millimeters apart. And these are like nine. So you'll have to kind of Dremel that out, which is really annoying. And I'll probably work on updating this file, but knowing my life, I won't make any promises on that. The other thing is uh, you can kind of see I've made some Dremel. I have had to cut away a bit of the triangular shape with the Dremel because it's stuck too far out for a 1404. Uh, another thing that I'll work on fixing, but I did want that print to come real close to the bell, um, just for style, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, those are the only two real things to note. The O3 fits, there's four different positions you can put it in depending on how much protection you want versus uh, what angle of lens. So like if you put this further back in, you'll probably see the corners of this thing. But it's still pretty well protected. I mean, it's flush with the front and you don't see anything on ultra wide. Um, yeah, there's nothing much to it. So without further ado, I'll show you some flight footage. I say that, but actually, I wanted to show you this real quick. Uh, this is the V1, like the first version of the frame that I made. This is um, this is where I learned that I needed those extrusions on the bottom. So, uh, see if I can demonstrate this. But you see that there's a bit of flex there, eh? It's probably enough that this would have really made it nearly impossible to tune. That's pretty much gone with the second version. Um, and I'm kind of curious while I'm recording this footage. I kind of want to know what the breaking point of this is. Um, because it feels pretty tough to me. I guess this won't exactly be that scientific. I don't have like some sort of weight scale. But I'm just going to put my thumbs here. Pull down on the side. That's probably like... The most extreme thing that could happen to this drone. So, okay, so it is breakable. Um, it took a significant amount of force to do that. And this was only printed at like 15 to 20% infill with four walls. So you can get away with this. I would probably wouldn't freestyle it. But if you want a quick, cheap cruiser built with some extra parts you got left at home, this might work for you. Anyway, I'll post it up, uh, play, with it if, play with it if you like, remix it if you like, let me know what you think. And um, I'll show you some flight footage now so you can see that uh, this thing isn't complete bullshit. <laughs> 